So welcome back to the C-Suite Spot. This is where I'm interviewing inspiring C-Suite leaders from my network, and I'm checking in on them to see how they're coping in these challenging times. Last time, if uh, you remember, we gained some great insights from Mark Francis, that dynamic co-founder of the Uspire Group. And this week, we've moved to another inspiring interview with both the founders of the sustainable water brand, Drinks Cubed. Rab and Suki come from different backgrounds, but share a common goal to rid the world of unsustainable water served in single-use plastic. Rab hails from the world of city-based investment banking, and Suki, the world of sales and marketing in FMCG. They launched Drinks Cube last year and had just gained a major listing with Whole Foods as the pandemic struck. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hi, it's Rob. Hi, pleasure meeting you. Yeah, lovely to, have, lovely to have you here and um, thanks ever so much. I know it's been super busy for you um, since that pandemic, in fact, before the pandemic hit. Um, so it's all been a very challenging time and what a time to, to launch a brand uh, anyway. Um, I just thought it'd be really good if you could start by briefly describing what Drinks Cube does and uh, what kind of challenges the industry faces in this coronavirus lockdown. So Suki, if you, if you could start. Yeah, more than happy to. Um, so Drinks Cube has set out on a mission to become the lowest carbon footprint drinks brand in the UK over the next three years. Uh, we initially launched in 2019, um, but we've been doing about 18 to 24 months work before that on building the brand, on all the research and all the, um, on various different uh, parts of the project. The, the key, you know, the key thing that we felt that makes us different to most other drinks brands is we're trying to hold ourselves accountable uh, for every single part of the supply chain, um, which which we look at from you know everything including the materials the energy um and the production processes used in producing most soft drinks and and seeing how we can really cut carbon at every stage and then so so that was the, the principle and we launched in 2019 with a natural mineral water packaged in a um in a paper-based carton that uses um, significantly less carbon than a plastic bottle and is 100% recyclable, recyclable using 90, over 94% plant-based materials. Um, and you know, even the plastics we use are plant-based and sourced from EU forests. So, so that, that's essentially the product at the moment is a natural mineral water in a paper-based carton. That, the traction we were getting uh, we, since launch was great. You know, we, we were having conversations with all sorts of food, uh, a lot of people in the food service sector, um, retailers such as Whole Foods, um, and a lot, a lot of others in the premium sector, um, but then also in travel. So we, were, we had literally just launched uh, onto a quite well-known cruise um, line company. However, that was one week before our first delivery went in, one week before the coronavirus struck. We decided that, okay, that actually as much as um, the, the sales part, we knew that obviously it was very obvious that sales were going to take a dip. So we decided that, okay, ah, sorry, cut out that a little bit. <laughs> right, so um, we knew sales were going to take a dip, However, we then moved on to, to looking at how we can help the community and the people on the front line tackling the COVID crisis because as much as our business wants to be um, successful and have all the other, you know, and we want to grow this, it's really important for us um, for it to be part of society, not just something that sits outside it. Um, so... So we decided to take, move our commercial efforts from selling to actually seeing where we can help out and use the stock that we had here in the UK at the time um, and send that out to hospitals across the country. Um, we were very lucky to work with um, a number of people at Breaks who have helped develop relationships with the hospitals 
we were able to send out over 35,000 cartons within a in period of about four weeks um, from the crisis hitting. So that was mid-March onwards. Um, yeah, so just to echo what Saki was saying, um, we really, really um, fell back and evaluated what our core um, ethics were of our business. Um, whereby we knew that we needed to develop a business and that's what our aim is to be socially responsible and be part of um, society. Um, so it was absolutely instrumental to both bring in unison our ethical side as well as our sustainable side. So we're all about um, doing good in the planet and doing good in the world and, and the immediate knee-jerk reaction was um, fortunately, Saki and I have many family members and friends that work in the medical field, so we knew and preempted the constraints the NHS will find. So this is kind of almost like a privilege for us to do our very little bit, but it was significant enough to help um, the NHS with hydrating, especially after PE, especially we knew that there will be uh, delivery issues, stock issues, Canteens were going to close down. Um, communal fountains were out of bound. So it, it really enabled us to just think a little bit more outside the business and position ourselves to be of, of help to our community. Great, great. Now, now that's, a, that's a really interesting insight and uh, but only sort of touches on how tricky things have been over the last two or three months. Um, but your positivity shines through both of you. Um, so you both had, as I said at the beginning, interesting and different careers for, for different reasons. Um, Rav, you know, could you start by uh, just explaining a bit uh, about your background and how you think the challenges and experiences of the banking industry have helped you um, set this brand up and navigate so far the challenges of the COVID virus? And then, Zuki, you, you follow suit and explain yeah. your, your perspective. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I had, uh, my background's 15 years in investment banking and uh, specifically global markets. It's where I've uh, basically traded across um, um, multi-asset classes, so bonds, um, FX and um, asset-backed securities and equities. Um, now, my kind of one of the biggest and most experienced um, events in my career was navigating whilst working at JP Morgan um, through the 2008 crisis. So um, what that enabled me to do was really be, it was one of the lead, most leading um, teams in the world that was affected by the 2008 crisis. Um, so we, we, we kind of worked with the US with top money and looked at um, kind of securing the asset back security market um, in the housing crisis and also then looked at um, the CDS market. So really fully um, involved in that, in that world. Um, and, but what, it, what the takeaway for that was really about crisis management. When everything kind of falls around you, I think the, the saying that really echoes is, is those, who, those around who lose your heads, you must remain cool in yours. Um, so when the pandemic hit, Saki and I really kind of instantly sat back and said, what's the macro approach? What's our objectives? What's our core values? Let's take stock. Let's not panic. Um, so that was something that really um, was, was something that I benefited from my historical, well, from my banking career. But the approach of just always looking at everything on a macro level and then reverse engineering, what, how do you achieve your goal with several objectives and and also Suki and I have had like amazing comments and how, how this began we're, we're just step taking step back we're both related we're both related and when we came out of this we looked at setting difference and 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 really tackling combat combating change of climate change and Suki's back and um, his history and his relevance of, of and the drinks and food market really shed a light of how much um, packaging was polluting the air. And I then kind of compelled that with, well, I'm, we're looking at bonds, we're looking at emerging markets, and we can just see everyone's looking to take advantage or profiteer from the destruction of, of, of the earth rather than actually come up with solutions to make it a better place. Um, because it's very easy 
um, to make money off resources because environment and pollution isn't something that's been factored in into the price of our products. If it would, we pay a different price of what we pay now. Right now, it's all about profit margins and it's all about something being as cheap as possible. Unfortunately, it's just a deferred cost um, because you will pay the price for whatever is cheap now. So these are the sort of conversations that Saki and I were having. And, and um, every time we evaluated everything, we took a math, science and economic approach to it. Does it make sense? Um, so th this, is, this was the background that set me up. And I'm also just a problem solver. That's what my role involved in banking. Um, so be isolating financials, but you have to look into the periphery. Um, so what the problem is, you've got to see what's around that. Um, and, and that's where basically we came up with this whole looking at each, each the, the value chain in a business. Um, CO2, I mean, when we start looking at packaging, Suck and I really quickly identified that that's, that's one part of the business. So what are we trying to achieve? What would we want to do? And this is why Drink Scheme was set up to actually really um, attack pollution along the value chain. So looking at pollution in manufacturing, looking at pollution in distribution, looking at pollution or um, carbon footprint to be specific in each of those chains. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> gone is the world of banking and uh, in comes the, the world of water. <laughs> I, I feel I'm still, a, I'm still a commodities trader right now. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have anything to add to your career? You, I'll, I'll leave that to you, uh, so please go ahead explain. So yeah, so, um, so with the history of um, working in food and drink, you know, understanding that um, the COVID crisis was quite unique in the fact that I don't think anybody's experienced anything like this before. Um, so, so to say that we, you know, we could use our experience to, on this, we could in some ways, but then there were other ways we were completely blind. Um, so, you know, having worked through, worked with, because we're, we're dealing with um, a lot of suppliers are from outside of the UK. We're having to, you know, look at our currency strategies, our um, long-term approach. But, you know, essentially we knew that at the moment, the requirement, we didn't need people, we didn't need brands going out and pushing themselves to be some sort of solution to the problem that we've never seen before, but we just needed society to come together. And what we, so one of our key things in the way we've, um, remained relevant was actually finding out who we could help and where and how because I think everyone in this situation has the opportunity to help another uh, help people and there would be it's been very clear that there have been some brands that have come out to the fore um, you know and helped the community and the wider community whereas others have decided to take a little bit more of a conservative approach and just sat back and not done very much no and I, I i think you know knowing you guys as i do and uh and the time i've spent with you over the last few months uh with your brand and watching it uh develop um it's interesting listening to how you both describe the same thing which is about the core values uh rab you you, you refer to it as the core values and when you look at the big thinking from a macro perspective and i think you're so right I think the core values uh, have uh, remained strong and they've been actioned and there's never been um, a clearer time for, for brands to have their values tested. And um, I think the authenticity has shone through in this process. I mean, we've kind of uh, answered the, the, the kind of next question, which is great, which was all about how, how you've adapted. Um, and um, for me, I, I, I think it's more around how you've continued um, because it's accelerated and put more pressure on you but your values have remained firm and strong to you so i i, I kind of i mean one of the, the the next question is is more of a personal one and and i think people have been interested in the personal side behind this um now can i ask you how you both have been affected by this as individuals and and how you've managed to keep going and stay fit and positive and strong 
Um, Saki, how, how, how about you? How, how, and you, you start, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, that, that's, that's fine. Um, we actually, this, this gets a little bit funny, to be honest, um, because when, when we did have that time to reflect and actually what's been, what we've been doing well and what we haven't, we both realised we actually um, had put on a few pounds, to, to put it politely. Um, and decided actually, well, if we are going to be locked at home, let's make some, this into a bit of a challenge. And uh, so over the last 12 weeks, we've been in a, a challenge of who can lose more weight. Um, and so we, we're both using different techniques. Um, but, um, but yeah, we both, you know, um, just remain, you know, bought exercise more into our routine. Uh, we're both, you know, both taken up the full advantage of our one hour exercise a day. Um, and the funny thing is between the two of us, when there is a bit of a competition, we do take it a little bit more seriously. Um, yeah, funny that, <laughs> but yeah, we have really taken on, um, and I think the beautiful, the, the nice thing is we've both, um, regained the love of cooking, look, cooking again. Um, and you know, and the simplicity of actually cooking for yourself is you know, it has, as well as the, the end product, you know, is the, the process is quite enjoyable. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, just to echo what Sophie was saying, um, both of us personally, um, in actual fact, taking back that was Sucky missed out, um, Sucky actually got a little bit ill to begin with. And that really put us a worry about the whole business um, and thought, right, has he got COVID? How will he um, be affected? Um, so we knew what we were facing was real and that really put it in perspective of, of the importance of health. I mean, health is amazing. Health is the new wealth. So for us, for business to postpone, for everything else to be functional, we have to be optimised ourselves. So that's where it really came about and saying, right, Christ, we, are we healthy? The question of are we healthy? And, and both of us need, like the business, you need a goal you need an objective so we just said right it's march we'll give ourselves the next eight weeks and we we, we, we chose a, a lovely number <laughs> but we set number. ourselves a goal where we needed to lose uh, 10 kg 10 k um kg each so that was that was a little benchmark of a uh, weekly weigh-in so every monday we, we we set up a call how much weight have you lost and actually about so you got almost on a daily basis, but um, physical was definitely the first thing that altered. But secondly, we also looked at it and said, right, what can we control? What can we do? What's our environment that we need to have? And, and, and that approach was taking both within the business of what we were doing and our personal lives and like, like, like amount of WhatsApp messages that we've sent each other, what we've cooked and what, we, what we're eating today. And, and how, how, how we're trying keto today and uh, <laughs> how low fat our feels our meals are. But definitely um, from personal, I, I now know how to plate dishes for Instagram. <laughs> I think that's been my greatest achievement <laughs> <laughs> for pictures that I'm going to be sending Sucky. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, no, that, 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 that's so good. I've got this image. Of, I'm not going to ask in this interview where we ended up in terms of the, um, the 10 kg, um, but I think that's a, that's, a, that's a really strong competition you guys got going there. Um, again, the final sort of question, and this is the one that's probably the hardest to answer. Um, we're nearing a kind of state of normalcy, um, or well, I hate that expression, new normal, but we're kind of returning gradually to what we want to uh, see back. Um, what are the next few months going to hold for the brand? And how do you see uh, Drinks Cubed uh, regaining momentum? How do you see the kind of lead up to Christmas for your brand? So um, if you could start with this one, Raph. Mm. Yeah, sure. Um, essentially, um, as far as the business is, is concerned, nothing's changed because we set out with a, a plan, objectives and our ethics. So we're going to stay true to those. Now, that what and, and what we're pivoting is how we action those objectives. Um, so we kind of plan to be 
um, still operating in the in the markets that we we we've set out. We 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 um, switched a little bit more um, of our strategy to go online. So we've been emphasising a little bit more direct to consumer um, than we had um, initially um, planned. But in addition to that, um, we're also working with um, places of importance, um, hospitals, um, places that we know that are opening up immediately um, and really supporting um, the hospitality in a slightly different way that we were going to do. But our online strategies has, has come forward a little bit more. Um, we're still very wanting to engage with the conscious consumer because I think what this opens up primarily is the world has almost had a shot to sit down and reflect. So I believe that we're in a reflection point right now. And um, Saki and I both feel right now that the world's going to come back and it'll want, it'll, it'll be demanding more. It'll, ask, it'll be asking more questions. It'll be a little bit more conscious of what it's consuming. And that then presents a, a massive opportunity for us to present ourselves, present the case, and change the way things are. We could be greener, cleaner, and, 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 and consume slightly differently. So that's what we're really doing, looking at educating our consumer, looking at educating um, buyers, conversations that we're having, really instilling, well, is this the best way? Can we rethink what we're purchasing? What can we rethink the way business is done? And what are the what are the opportunities out there? Um, we think that there's going to be a lot more um, people staying at home, looking at home, cooking at home. Um, so there's going to be a whole load of change in trends. Um, so so we're still trying to stay true to what we what we, what we set out to do. So would you like to add anything yeah. to that? So so I think a lot of, just a. Uh, a lot of what Rav said is kind of encompasses a lot of our, um, our strategies towards sales. But, you know, the, the, the brand and the business was set up to do a lot more than that. So we have um, used the time, you know, we will still need to pivot we, on certain things on, the, on how consumers consume products. However, um, what, the other energy reduction and the carbon emission projects that we've got going on have been you know in full flow and those discussions have actually been have been accelerated a little bit so we may be a little bit ahead of where we want to be in certain aspects of our business um, and behind on certain things the most important thing sales at the moment because obviously everything's taken a, a, a three to six month pause so so yes we're still looking to learn from how consumers behave but the nice thing about being a startup is the ability to pivot uh, and the flexibility to change as and when is needed so so we, we we feel that we're in a quite a strong position for having that opportunity to pivot and be flexible brilliant and, and, and i think i just want to say thank you ever so much for joining today just to give a little insight into your brand and what thank you're you. about I think the, the key message that's come out for me, and I'm sure the viewers and listeners will be the ethics and the values of the brand, the long-term goals of what you're trying to do as two individuals. And it's a credit to you how you've handled the brand and, you, and uh, the progress during the lockdown, the work you've done with the NHS, et cetera. Be very modest about that. I just want to thank you and wish you all the best. And, um, and let's catch up soon. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much, Rob. Thank you very much for uh, the interview and thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.